last month we featured the wood sorrel, which is a common plant with a fantastic acidic taste to it. Uh, really nice to just pop in your mouth when you're out on a walk. I and mean, it looks very much like a clover leaf. Well, this month we're talking about the common sorrel. It's a plant that sounds very much the same and it does taste the same. However, it looks very different. At this time of year, it's a low growing plant. It grows in a, a rosette shape, although that could be difficult to see when it's poking in and out amongst the grasses and other plants here. So what you want to do is look for the distinctive leaf shape. Here's a typical example of what we're going to see when we're looking at the leaf of the common sorrel at this time of year. It's a pointed leaf, ovular in shape, maybe spear-like would be a good way to uh, describe it, with a very clear central vein and it's got a slightly fleshy, succulent quality to it. But the key defining feature is at the base of the leaf. These two pointed lobes pointing back like the uh, barbed points of an arrowhead. And those little points often also stick up as well from the surface of the leaf. Later in the season, this plant is going to become even more conspicuous because it's going to grow quite tall as it competes with the surrounding grass. And it has quite a distinctive tall flower spike, a kind of rusty red colour, and the leaves are going to get quite a lot larger as well. But for us as foragers, that's not when the plant is at its best. We don't want to be harvesting it then. It's now when the leaves are more succulent and small, that they're much better for us. Let's get a closer look at the plant here, just nestled in amongst the grasses, nettle and leaf litter. True to its name, it is very common. You're quite likely to find the common sorrel. And we can really see how different it looks from its namesake, the wood sorrel there. There is another sorrel that you could find called the sheep sorrel that looks quite similar. And that's one that we'll talk about in next month's foraging walk. But for now, as you can see, they've got a shiny quality to them, slightly glossy appearance to them. That's quite noticeable. But you can see those little barbs sticking out at the base of the leaves there. But most importantly, what does the plant taste like? Well, it's much like its namesake. Like the wood sorrel, it's got oxalic acid in it, which gives it that acidic flavour. It tastes like the peel of Granny Smith's apples. It's quite pokey. Now, although the sorrel is quite a strong flavour, for me, it's a very welcome one because it's different from what else is out there, such as the wild garlic and then the, the bitter wild greens that we have. The sorrels offer this acidity and with that we can get creative. If we think of it as our equivalent to the lemon, it's our wild alternative. If we think of it like that, then the sorrel can be used very much with fish. Um, so either stuffed inside the fish, just the leaves as they are to infuse the fish with a strong flavour there, or we could shred it up and put it in with some plain yoghurt as a bit of a dip or sauce. It could be um, put on top of a quiche, um, uh, cut up and stuck inside an omelette, that would work really well. Um, you could put it into a salad, um, but because it's strong, maybe just put a few in, see how you go, and if you really like it, you can throw more in as well, because it will take over the salad otherwise. This is a really good habitat to look out for the common sorrel here because we have rough pasture. It's not been grazed too heavy so the plants have been nibbled right down to the base and also the land hasn't been improved with lots of fertilizers or anything like that. So it's a good place to find sorrel and other wild plants. But as I said, it's a very common wild plant. You could find it in playing fields, you do get it there um, and also at the bottom of hedgerows. There are a couple of lookalikes we need to be wary of when foraging for the common sorrel. The first is Lords and Ladies, otherwise known as Cuckoo Pint. That also has two lobes pointing down at the base of the leaf. But whereas these lobes are very pointed on their tips, the lobes of the Cuckoo Pint are much more rounded. Now at this time of year, the leaves of the cuckoo pint, or lords and ladies, are much larger than that of the sorrel. They've grown on more. But earlier in the season, when you can harvest this plant, in winter when you can find it, the first leaves of those lords and ladies are a similar size, so you could confuse them. So do get to know that plant. It's not one you want to eat because it's poisonous. Another very common wildflower that we've got all over this field is lesser celandine. And uh, I just put the two leaves up side by side. 
This is the lesser celandine in my left hand and you can see it's a lot smaller and it does have um, pointed tips to the base of the leaf but they're much more spread out. The leaf is a lot smaller and a lot more rounded. That's not one you want to eat but once you get your eye in you shouldn't really confuse the two. So that's the common sorrel, a good wild food plant to know. I think for three reasons. One, it's common, so you're quite likely to find it. Two, I think it tastes great. And three, it's got a long season. Although we're featuring it in April now, you can harvest this right through the winter. And also you can get young leaf growth in the autumn as well. So get out there and look for the uh, common sorrel for yourself. Well, I hope you found this video both useful and inspiring. And if you've got a creative way to use sorrel in your own cooking, let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. And if you want to get more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, and also give the video a like to show your support. Now this video is actually just a small segment of a much longer April wild food and foraging walk video that we've created, and that's exclusive to our patrons. And if you'd like to join our tribe over on patreon.com, you can get access to the full video, as well as 12 months of other wild food videos, recipes, live Q and A's, all sorts of good stuff. We'll leave the link to that in the description below. Thanks very much for watching. Stay safe and happy foraging, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.